Dear trainers and trainees in electrical installation qualification, I'm glad that you find this so interesting. I'm your trainer, Lux, and I'll make sure that I give you all the material you need to make sure that you prosper in this. So if you're a trainer, you'll get all the tools that you require to handle your class. And if you're a trainee, then you're also in the right place. You'll have everything that you need. All without forgetting, go down below this video, click on the subscribe icon. You'll be subscribed to the channel. It's free, remember? Then enable the bell icon to ensure that you're updated with all videos that I post in due time. So the, today I'll be taking you through the element perform system sizing, which is the second element of plan electrical installation work. If you haven't seen the first one, please go and search for conduct site survey. That's the first element. So basically, perform system sizing enables you to estimate, to quote, to have an overview of your installation. So the reason why we do system sizing is to ensure that the system that we come with at the end of the day suits the client, suits its uh, functionality. So that's why we have to understand the concept of system sizing, especially electrical system sizing. You understand that the field of electrical is a dangerous field if not handled properly. That's why this element kicks in and it's very, very important. So basically, system sizing is the estimation of electrical material and equipment based on rating, quantity, and size. The reason why we need to always uh, focus on system sizing, one is to, for protection purposes, to protect our system from faults, also to eliminate the, sh uh, the risk of shock. Yeah? You don't want a client having a shower when he, he switches on, it gets so shocked in the in, in the bathroom so that's why it's very essential to perform system sizing it also helps to quote exactly of what is needed yes over quoting and under quoting can sometimes be embarrassing and also it helps to quote the right type the right size of uh, a material that's going to be installed so the process of system sizing starts from immediately after you've done your site survey so while you're doing your site survey you have the floor dimension or the floor uh, floor plan of the building or even if it's some in a system that you install you have the blueprints so from the blueprints you are you should identify and quantify your load identify if let's for example mm, I, i'm going to install maybe in a two bedroom house so on the sitting room maybe from the floor plan what should I place in the sitting room? So to me, what comes to my mind, the client will need to use a TV. The client will might, might be, will want to use an AC. So in that case, I have to make room for that. Then I have to quantify how many ACs in the sitting room. Do I need five ACs in the sitting room? Do I need like 10 lamps in the sitting room? That's what I need to do. Then right after there, I will visualize, sketch it, make it now look like reality. Yes, that's where we do what we call electrical layout diagrams or yeah, layout diagrams. Then from there showing how each the material is connected to another one yeah, from protection to the final circuit. Then there are, thereafter we are going to design a final circuit based on nominal parameters. And when I say nominal parameters, there are regulations that are there that are guiding us on how to carry out the wiring. These nominal parameters are there for us. It's guided by the IEE regulation or IET regulation, Institution of Electrical Engineers. So from there, you'll go ahead and design the size and protection of conductors. Yes, assuming it's light, how many lamps? Then from lamps, these lamps are going to be positioned where and where. How are they being controlled? Then now you size the, the conductor. Remember, a circuit has to have a conductor. Then thereafter, size the protection of that circuit. Yes. How uh, how will it be switched off and on? That's what a uh, process of sizing entails. 
so we have other important uh, terms i like just to go through quickly these important terms helps in when it comes to designing of cables and all that so we have what we call design current actually is the current to be carried by the system or the circuit and a normal operation we have the nominal rating current you'll be hearing of this so this one is the rating uh, of the of the protected device if i decide to use a fuse the fuse comes with a different rating if it's a circuit breaker different types of circuit breakers with different rating so that's the term that we used to, 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 to refer to them is nominal rating or nominal setting then we have current current capacity the maximum current which can be carried by a conductor under specified condition of course so this current current capacity we have two types we have the one that you're going to calculate just normal calculation we use the mention iz and the one that is specified in the wiring regulations like for the iet and iee we use it to denote tabulated current current capacity we also have numbers of rating factors these are correcting factors understand that uh, under different condition it uh, the system should be treated differently then we have also voltage drop you understand this uh, how well electrical potential reduces along the path the longer uh, the conductor the resistance becomes more and also that so it keeps on reducing the voltage drop understand that the voltage drop should not uh, should not exceed a given limit for both lighting circuit and power circuit i'll be talking about that later so how do we design a uh, how do we calculate design current it's very simple in other cases like socket outlets, uh, cooker units, you be just the, the manufacturer will indicate the design current. But if you're not given that, then just go to the uh, power a uh, power patch and see what are the characteristics of maybe if it's a fridge, you'll see. So if it's 3000 uh, watt, then that is the power in, in input of the fridge. So definitely you just take power over voltage. If it's a domestic, then we use single phase voltage. If it's industrial, then we use three phase voltage. In that case, nominal rating or nominal setting, we have a guided list on these. These already exist. That's what guides manufacturer to produce this. So you just be confined with it, be clear with it. Then we have uh, the current current capacity. The one I've said you have to calculate. The one you calculate is IZ. But once you get the the value that corresponds with the one that is tabulated in the IE regulation that that becomes our IT and how is it calculated yes, yeah, the nominal rating or the nominal setting current IN over the correcting factors any other factors that uh, may affect the system operation so these rating factors are classified into four we have the rating factor for ambient temperature the surrounding temperature of course that is denoted by CA we have the rating factor for grouping grouping different cables so assuming i have a uh, three uh, circuits maybe let's say three uh, ring circuits so this ring circuit every ring uh, ring circuit is considered as a circuit on this one so grouping two or three together that's grouping now we consider those are three grouped ring circuits it has a factor on its own the tables have been shared as appendices toward the end of the video then we have the fusing factor but this is specifically to bs3036 fuse uh, which has a specific uh, factor of 0 0.725 then we have a factor for thermal insulation the walls we understand that some cables you might be just hanging freely on the uh, in air but some are thermal insulated in the walls others are even buried in the ground so we have the factor for that uh, then uh, we also have something else to note about we call the diversity factor this one now goes with the number of appliances depending on the nature of what you're installing so for a cooker I understand that it has a diversity because it takes a lot of car a current and you find that even the 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 manufacturers rate it high to give room for for its operation if someone is operating a cooker for only 10 minutes uh, the consumption uh, the, the consumption is different with the same person who is also operating the same for one hour so at a given time it will not be distorted and now will be taking in either more power more current rate than what is uh, expected because maybe that's what we refer to maybe diversity more will be shared as we continue how do we size a cable very very important 
understand that other things are very easy to to size like if it's a room you just don't, you, you can just estimate a room needs a needs a light uh, maybe needs a socket outlet it's so easy but placing it in strategic positions what matters but now very important part is choosing the path that's the cable or the conductor so how to size a conductor one you have to select the the type of cable for the installation then after selecting that you also have to choose the method of installation that you're going to apply the most common method we usually use is reference method a where we take our conduits we place it there in the wall and then uh, it's we after plastering the, you cannot see the conduits but now the cables will be drawn into the conduit that's the reference method a we also have a reference method b which is now about uh, placing the trunks or placing the the conduits on the surface of the wall not inside the wall on the surface of the wall so all that is is available in a regulation as well as other wiring regulation depending in your country so after you have identified uh, the, the type of the cable and the method of installation now you proceed to the second which is now calculating the design current for the load if you're designing for maybe cooker unit then how much current does the cooker unit take mm. so assuming the cooker is rated six six kilowatt and maybe it's using maybe a, a single phase to operate then the current from the from the cooker that should be drawn from the cooker uh, that should be drawn by the cooker should be six thousand over 240 that's a lot of current then from there now you proceed to sizing a protective device a protective device the, all the nominal rating current should be closer or corresponding to the design current IB. So if the circuit, my lighting circuit, maybe design current for lighting circuit is 5 amperes, then if I'm selecting a circuit breaker, I should select a circuit breaker that is closer to 5 amperes, not less than, either equal or slightly higher than. That's the, the technique about selecting the protective device rating. Then after that, also identify other rating factors or the correction factors in this in the system installation like the grouping factor the ambient temperature all that the thermal insulation consider that before you make your conclusion as you head towards getting the maximum current capacity so if you are doing in a normal setting where there's no any rating factors then the nominal uh, setting or the design current becomes equal to the current current capacity so you just go to the table select appropriate table for the cable and then using your the your, your, your current from the one you have designed maybe from the nominal or from the current current capacity depending with it select the right cable then thereafter choose the right size of the cable from the uh, regulation table then from there check for voltage drop because you might get a, a suitable cable but this cable after given length let's say the length exceeding 100 meters it loses now its worth maybe so you'll have to go for a bigger size of cable all that that's the process of uh, sizing the cable very important one you should not about it we have done just uh, an illustration for example here uh, the question reads a consumer is has asked to have a new six kilowatt shower unit installed in a domestic promise premises the existing six-way consumer unit houses BS3871 MCBs and supplies two ring final circuit, one cooker circuit, and two lighting circuit, leaving one spare way. The length of the run from the consumer unit to the shower is 30 meters. The installation reference method B and the ambient temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. If the PVC twin and earth cable is to be used, calculate the size of the cable so from the question first you have been you have been specified the type of cable you're going to use so we are going to use a multiple cable which is pvc that's a thermoplastic cable pvc twin and earth it has two live and one additional uh, a, a, a conductor for i think so that's a multiple cable it's not a single core cable and then the method of installation they have identified here is reference method b it means there is additional 
it's an additional installation uh, there's already another existing installation so this person is adding this client is adding another installation and in this case he has decided that the mounting shall be just done on the wall so the best appropriate method to or the enclosure to choose here is trunking it's one suitable for for the surface mounting so in that case we can now proceed now what we already know the type of the cable and the method of now we proceed to design current how do we calculate the design current we have been tell you have been told the rating of the shower and uh, it's a domestic premise so definitely that's to a single phase installation that's how we go now we design current that's how it is 6000 over 240 that one gives us 25 amperes then after that you have to select the nominal rating or the protective device rating and in this case you have also been uh, specified the rating the, the, the protective device in this case is bs that 871 MCBs miniature circuit breakers the one that is being used the consumer unit is already available which has an extra spare way meaning that we just need one uh, single pole MCB circuit breaker and be specific BS3871 but the rating should be suitable closer to 25 amperes so in that case we also have in the table 25 amperes in the line of circuit breaker so having it exactly will be better because the next one is uh, 32 so having that it means to be suitable for this and then after that we proceed to consider any other rating factors so from here I can see uh, ambient temperature 35 that's not normal in normal case uh, the cables uh, or the conductors the normal, no, uh, the normal temperature that's considered normal is 30 degrees Celsius so that five is slightly higher than the normal. So we go to the table. I've also attached the, the tables as appendices. You'll be able to see it. So table 4B1, it guides on uh, ambient temperature. So we are just going to get the one that corresponds to that five degrees with a reference method B. So that figure is 0 0.94. That's the rating factor. So it means that we have to put that in consideration. Otherwise, we are going to have a problem with our installed system so how do you go how do you proceed now from there getting the current current capacity iz or it in other case so it will be the nominal uh, rating or ib the design current over the correction factor or rating factor for ambient in that case it changes from 25 to 26.6 amperes then once we are done with that we have considered all the rating factors we proceed to selecting the cable and in that case there's also a table that have uh, uh, attached for this job for this video so the table is specifically for domestic installation and uh, for multiple cable and in that case uh, you you're going to look for for the slot where uh, the method the reference method a and b lies and you're going to select a multiple cable for single phase ac so in that case the corresponding tabulated current current capacity for 26.6 is 32 that one is the one that is closer we cannot go beyond that or we cannot go below that so in that case 32 amperes correspond with a cable size 6.0 square millimeter so the the shower unit is going to use 6.0 size a PVC twin and earth cable that's we will now we already have the cable we already have the protective device for the cable for the circuit but we are also going to look at the voltage drop you have been told that this is this circuit from the consumer unit to the shower it's 30 meters away so we look we, we go to the second table just right after that that should be now table 4b2 I mean 4D A 4D B that is where we are going to look so we look for the cable 6.0 millimeter square correspond with the voltage drop you'll find that the voltage drop for that is 7.3 millivolt per ampere per meter so in each meter with one ampere flowing in that cable it will be losing 7.3 millivolt so when once we do the total for 30 meters with with just considering one ampere not one ampere but the the, the designed ampere which is 25 then we'll be losing 5.4 volt 
that is the case so this is still within the required limit because the required limit for for power and socket outlet is uh, for for domestic should be a uh, 12 volts yeah about five percent of 240 so that's all about uh, cable sizing let's quickly go to conduits and trunking with conduits and trunking or any other enclosures can be cable trays it's so, so simple we also have a guideline for this what we use this is what we, we call them terms terms so you'll hear of uh, cable term trunking term uh, conduit term so it's just a matter of <laughs> cross multiplication so why do we need to do sizing for conduit and trunking as well so one to enable easy drawing of cables and another one is to ensure space factor that is not exceeded remember we also have the issue of eddy current so we cannot keep on merging two cables together tightly what it also need to breathe we need to have free flow of air inside so that cooling and all that takes place so good then the space occupied by the cable for the trunking usually it's recommended that it does not exceed that five, uh, 45 percent of the internal trunking area it is often desirable to make a allowance for future addition of trunking system but also put in mind that the grouping factor should also be taken key in consideration so the sizing of conduit we will have to consider the terms for this case i didn't attach this but uh, they are available on the internet i've given just a sample on how you can size the conductor in this case i mean enclosure in this case the enclosure we are sizing is trunking so assuming you have uh, 20 cables of size uh, 1.5 square millimeter 35 cables of 2.5 square millimeter and 28 cables of 4.0 square millimeter and you need to house them in one trunking then what will be the appropriate size for that trunk i'm not talking of the length i'm just talking of the size so in this case there are ways one you you go to the table you get the corresponding uh, cable terms for each uh, cable in this case we are using stranded cables not solid drawn so you get the corresponding fact then you multiply by the number of cables so they get the total a term then get a conduit or maybe a trunking that corresponds that its term corresponds with the total uh, term that you've got and if you're going to use maybe a uh, maybe one trunk for each for each maybe a group of cables then just focus on maybe if it's 1.5 square millimeter cable then just get the cable term for 1.5 multiplied by 20 and then go look for a conduit or trunking that has term corresponding closer to that and then that would be the appropriate trunk size or cable, conduit size for the cable just simple as that you just have to have the two uh, the two with you and then proceed with the rest additional tips as i've said i'm coming to the end of this i've made it so easy for you i don't want to give you a lot of a, a, a bogus information so i'm just giving you exactly what you need you need to use the flow plan to estimate to identify to position the loads and when i say the loads i'm talking of uh, when it's lights you're talking of lights i understand that you what you you're going to play there is, is just simple but in real sense in the final installation we have if you're talking of ceiling chain layer then know the rating of ceiling chain layer mm -hmm. If you're talking of uh, an AC, you should know the rating of an AC, not just placing the AC. Then after there, quantify how many and how this load going to be connected. Are they all going to be connected as a group or as individual? Mm. Because that one is what will guide you on choosing the protective devices, choosing the distribution board or the consumer unit. The number of ways should also correspond with the number of final circuits in the, in the premise then thereafter you can now size using the nominal parameters that are given to make sure that it suits the client's expectation i think uh, that's all i can say i've also given you an assignment you can try it on your own here you did a site survey assuming you did a site survey and then you find that for that uh, for that uh, house that you did it will require 10 fluorescent lamps and each lamp is rated at 50 watts controlled by 
each switch mm, so i'm assuming maybe in this in this this block maybe it's a hostel and you find that it has 10 rooms and each room requires maybe a fluorescent lamp and that's how it's rated then maybe from there we also have a, a common bathroom for them which is a, a shower and the shower is rated in three kilowatt and the cooker for the kitchen that also control those there and then they have also nine twin socket outlets so i'm just making it up so that you can learn and master the aspect of sizing so going we have four final circuits here you can proceed ahead and get now the the number of sockets outlet that uh, uh, the, the size of the uh, cable that will do for the socket outlet the cooker the shower the lamps get the protective devices for each and then even go ahead and size the consumer unit for each and all the circuit breakers that might be there for even if you, you decide to follow the right the root of fuses do the same so this one is to help you understand if you're mastering because this is the best part if you master this then you're on the right path i've also attached more pencils here so my first pencils is on there but you can get this book ie regulation 17th edition and just go to the table 4b1 the table 4b1 talks about the rating factor or the correcting factor to do with the ambient temperature as you can see the first column is ambient temperature and degree celsius and you can see 30 being one for almost all the remaining insulation so but the rest is uh, fluctuating so that's what i was saying i've also attached the another one for same but under different conditions this one now special cable and uh, it also has this you understand that uh, the, where the temperature goes as low as to 20 degrees i've attached another table also this one now is rating factor for grouping when we are talking the cg this one where it goes so it can be grouped but in a bunch of air can be grouped in the, on the wall grouped inside the wall all that so you'll see on my far on my far end of left end we have the column and that is the arrangement of cable touching then in between you have the number of circuits so when you say maybe you have three circuits then you're focusing on three and when i say three circuits, i don't mean the live neutral and earth the live neutral and earth that's one circuit so if you have six cables running in a in a conduit then those are two circuits then we have the far far end on my right the the guideline so which reference method are you referring if the reference method or method of installation is a to f then focus on that color and uh, that row i mean and the rest then you also have uh, now this one the one i was asking the telling you about table 4 d 1 a this one is for single core so if you are using single core uh, whether stranded or solid drawn this is the guide so you'll see from the column one you have conductor cross section area that's where the cable size will be but what you're focusing on is when you know the tabulated current or the i the current carrying capacity for in case maybe let's say the one we are looking for does not lie in this table but assuming i was to direct you maybe 20 26.6 i will just go to the second column that is two cables single face and uh, we have also three cables a three phase so if it was single core cable then i'll go to to that column two in that case it is uh, 26 from 26 we have uh, 34 so the appropriate will be 26 the 34 is far far beyond it will not be a good protective cable for the same two. so that one be this the corresponding cable size is four and then the, the the dimension is four square millimeter then the second table is now for the voltage drop so assuming i've selected the cable uh, four millimeter and but i want to know how much voltage will it be losing in a given one meter in one ampere as in that so i'll just go to again cross section uh, conductor that's column one i look for four then go to reference method b for the same so for reference method b and that one the mv is stock m that will be uh, 11 so it will be losing 11 millivolt per ampere per meter that's how we do it so that's just uh, giving you guideline so the, the the second one is the one that i used the one that you can see now is so clear 
the multiple cable and it is thermoplastic meaning it's PVC we also have thermo setting which is now metallic uh, or uh, these special cables like the mineral insulated cables in that case so that's all about today I encourage you guys to uh, be vigilant uh, be active uh, listeners be active learners i'd like you to like the video comment your views on how you feel about the videos what changes you think we should i should make next when i upload the next video on the element number three that's coming underway also share the video just below this video there's a share icon when you, you you click on it it will give you the link you can copy the link and share it with your group of classes in your groups or share with it even status and all that but what i encourage you is to subscribe because when you subscribe it means you'll be updated automatically you, do, you won't need to come and again search on youtube it will be just to be there waiting for you when i upload anything thank you for your time and keep keep up